We are stuck at home, so what do we get our mom for Mother's Day? Make sure you stay tuned because I have the perfect DIY Mother's Day gift ideas that are super simple to put together and I know she's gonna love. Hey guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Caitlin. If you're new here, I love to DIY and make cute crafts, a lot of DIY home decor. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button and give me a big thumbs up if you enjoy today's video. Uh, so here's the thing. I tried my hardest to put together some gifts that you could DIY at home that were not corny or cheesy, but actually nice gifts that you would be proud to give and actually like something that I would want to receive. So we all have extra time right now. I know you can put these together. They are super simple and all of our favorite uh, retail stores such as clothing stores, home decor stores. I always love shopping like Ross and TJ Maxx for gifts. They're all shut down. So this is the perfect time to get in there and get creative and make your mom something special. Now you can give this to your mom, grandma, aunt, daughter, uh, any of the special ladies in your life, but I just try to compact a list of really nice projects that were super simple to make, but also she's gonna love to get. So I really hope you enjoy these and let's jump on into the first DIY. So for this project, I had one of these Dollar Tree glass mugs on hand, but you definitely could replace this with any kind of plastic container, as well as a mason jar, um, just anything that you have on hand. I really like the idea of using this mug. I really like the handle on it because I kind of want to make this look like a little teacup planner. Uh, the first thing I decided to do was paint mine white. I definitely would recommend spray painting this just to get a smoother finish. I'm just using what I have on hand. So I'm using um, chalk paint. It did take a few layers. The texture shows up really bad on glass so that's why I would recommend spray painting it but this definitely got the job done I just had to apply a few different coats As you can see, I did go ahead and paint about halfway down inside of this cup just to make sure that anything that was going to be exposed around the rocks or the plants that I'm putting in here did have that pretty white finished look too. I want to make this as nice as possible since this is a gift and I'm going to chop up some styrofoam blocks or this is floral foam. I tried to cut it down so it would fit uh, further down inside the cup and it wouldn't stick up and it would give me plenty of room to add my rocks on top. Because this is a Mother's Day gift, I did want to add that touch of pink um, into each little project. So definitely feel free to replace any of these colors with your mom's favorite color or whoever you are making this for. But I thought that little pop of pink on the handle really made it pop out. And then I wanted to make a cute little face. I have made a cup like this before um, for like a vanity and I used actual fake lashes that you put on your eyes and it turned out adorable. So that would be another option. But today I'm just drawing these on there to make it really simple. I drew two little eyelashes and then a mouth and this did not have to be perfect. I just freehanded it on there. I thought it instantly made it adorable. And then because this is a little mug and I have seen on Pinterest people that stick the little tea bag out of there that say something cute on there and I just didn't have a little tag, but I thought it would also be really cute to make the little wooden heart hang over the side and write a personalized little message. I wanted it to be more towards the side in between the handle and the little face. So I didn't really have anything to hang it off of. So I just hot glued it on there, hoping that it would stay, but I pressed it nicely uh, tight inside of the glass. So just apply a lot of hot glue so it doesn't get pulled off. And then I wanted to make this a succulent holder. I love the succulents that Dollar Tree has. You can even opt to put like real succulents in here. I think this would be adorable. Um, but just like I say, try to use items that you have on hand or what you can order, pick up, so that way you are not going in and out of stores right now. But I just cut these down to fit in there. I put two larger succulents in the back. These larger ones were $1 each at Dollar Tree. And then Dollar Tree has a lot of two packs. Uh, so two succulents for a dollar. And I stuck a few of those around front. And then there was a couple little succulents that I had from previous projects. So I just tried to rearrange them until I really liked it. And I did go ahead and take back out the smaller succulents in the front so I could apply some of these little rocks to the front and that would hide all of the foam and then I could go back in and tuck in those smaller succulents in the front. Mm -hmm. 
but this is how adorable this little planter came together. I love the succulents sticking up tall in the back and the smaller ones in the front. You can definitely opt to use real succulents like I say, but I think this turned out gorgeous and would be the perfect to give to give to any mom this Mother's Day. The next project is a little bit more of a detailed project, so you have to work a little bit extra on it, but it's super simple to put together. Uh, this can be customized a million different ways, and I think it looks so high-end and looks like something you would have purchased from a store. You can use any type of sign or backing for this project. This is just what I had on hand. A real piece of wood would even work. I'm going to go ahead and pull that extra thing, that little seashell 3D piece off the front so I get a nice flat board to use. And I wanted to leave the back plain because I do want this to be really nice looking and not have ugly writing on the back. So I'm using a couple different pieces of scrapbook paper. I have this really beautiful vintage one with kind of like a, a pretty font on there. And then I have a gray uh, buffalo check one or gingham print and I go ahead and trace the sign on the gingham print uh, gray piece of scrapbooking paper. The scrapbooking paper I had picked up from Hobby Lobby a while back and then to apply this to the front of this sign I am going to put a ton of Mod Podge because I really want this to be held down nicely so I apply it to the sign and then I apply some to the back of this paper. And then I'm just smoothing this down as flat as I can get it so it doesn't have any bubbles in it. And then going to do a, a thicker coat on top of the paper. I've also heard that you can uh, kind of get the paper damp and that'll help uh, maybe keep the bubbles out. But this usually it works well for me. And then I'm wanting a smaller square just to get a little layered effect on this. So I laid my text paper upside down so I could kind of mark it. And then I folded it over just to get a really quick square. But I don't recommend this because I had to try to trim my square down to get it more even but um, just kind of measure and make sure that you get it as perfect as possible. And then I'm just repeating the same thing by adding some Mod Podge to the back of this paper and then I'm going to press it down and then add some more on top. And then Mod Podge takes a little bit to set and dry completely. So while that is drying, I'm going to be using one of these wooden words. I picked this up from Hobby Lobby a while back. It was less than $2. I'm thinking $1.50 maybe if it was that. It was very inexpensive. But if you don't have that on hand, you definitely could use stickers or just freehand it, print something out, use a Cricut or Silhouette or just anything to replace the uh, letters. Um, so you don't have to go out like I say. I know I'm going to keep driving that in the ground, but there's always a replacement whenever you are creating and crafting. You just have to be a little bit creative. So I am using the color ballet slipper in the Waverly chalk paint, which is this beautiful blush pink color. I went ahead and painted my word and made sure that I got the sides and then let that completely dry and then put it on top of my sign. I thought it would be the perfect color to put at the bottom of this sign. Like I say, I'm trying to add pink to all of these, but you definitely can opt for different colors. I think a stained effect would have also been really pretty on the mom part if you didn't want to make it so pink and girly. And then I added a little bit of greenery at the top as well as some pink roses. And then I put just a scrap piece of paper with a clothespin to kind of as a placeholder so I would know exactly where I wanted my photo holder to go. And then I could go ahead and secure down the top greenery and the floral and kind of see how everything's going to look laid out. To 
glue on the little roses. I just cut the backs off of them so that they wouldn't stick up and they would glue nice and securely down. I put a lot of pink of the light, light pink color in the background and then just a couple of the darker pink roses on top just so that they would pop out. But I think that is a beautiful shade of a coral pink. And then I wanted to hang this sign up with something besides jute string because I want it to be high quality looking. So I drilled a couple of large holes so that I could fit some nautical rope through and I had to put a little piece of tape on the ends to get it to go through this hole because my drill bit wasn't large enough and I uh, placed the little knots in the front. I think that makes it adorable and the perfect, perfect gift for any mom this Mother's Day. All you got to do is pop a picture on there, you and your mom or you and your kids so that she can enjoy that. But I think this is a gorgeous, simple project that is super simple to make right in your own home. I always love giving candles or receiving candles for any occasion so I thought it would be fun to kind of make a little candle with a twist um, something fun that we could do at home since like I say we can't get out shopping for fun candles so I found these two little metal uh, storage containers from Dollar Tree they were in a two pack for a dollar so these will be really inexpensive and I wanted to put pour some candle wax in here and kind of make my own candle but I wanted to add something special to make these a little bit more fun than a boring white candle so I ended up adding some secret little messages in the bottom so that after you burn your candle down or after it burns for a while and all the wax gets hot and turns clear that you would be able to see a sweet little message in the bottom. So you can see to get the perfect little white circles I just traced the lid, the smaller part of the lid, and then cut these out of white cardstock. And then I have these tiny little stamps from Target Dollar Spot I got at around Valentine's Day. And I just stamped some cute little messages. Um, obviously you want to leave the center blank because that's where the wick is going to stand up so you won't be able to see that part. I wish I would have glued these down with something other than hot glue because it didn't get close enough to the tin so some of the wax did want to go underneath and bubble up my paper. So I do recommend using like a school glue or something more of like a liquid glue that would hold it down nice and tight and then I did Mod Podge over these because I was scared the warm wax would uh, make the message smear so I just kind of wanted to make it seal over. I also thought it would be really fun to write a little handwritten message to see how that turned out as well as if you have if you wanted a little kid to decorate this little paper and then you could do the candle part of it but I thought it would be fun to kind of see how this one turned out as well. So I didn't have any old candles, that's what I would recommend using, but it has to be like a white candle, something that whenever it burns it will be clear and not a colored candle because I don't think you would be able to see the uh, text through that. So the first thing I'm doing is uh, I bake these in the oven at like 250 for about uh, 25 to 40 minutes. I just kind of kept an eye on it so I didn't know exactly the time but you can pretty much see after it has completely melted down and then I was able to pull the wicks out of there and wrap them around dowel rods and paintbrushes and just kind of set them in the center and let them completely set up and I think this is the fun part. It completely set up so you wasn't able to see the message so you won't even know that they're there but definitely tell or write a sweet little message to whoever you give these to so they don't just uh, throw them away but they do pay attention to the little message that you put down in the bottom. I wanted these to be a little bit more dressy so I went ahead and glued some really cute pink Dollar Tree gingham ribbon around the edges. Uh, you definitely could skip this part but I thought it made it really cute and then uh, you can put the lids back on there and then I'll show you how I stack these up and then wrap them in some cellophane to make them look like a really pretty gift. I twisted the cellophane up and then uh, secured that with a couple pieces of clear tape and then I'm using some leftover Valentine tool. It has this beautiful glitter in it. I thought this would be perfect for the occasion so I just tied this in a knot and then trimmed the edges down and then for a cute little tag I just took another one of my little wooden hearts and wrote my name on there and then I uh, just hot glued that into the center of this little bow. 
and I think the packaging is adorable on this. You definitely could use some colorful ribbons if you choose, but I think it turned out really pretty as is. Like I say, I would write in the card your special little messages so nobody throws them away or forgets about them and then make sure that they do look for the fun surprise at the end. And then I want to show you what they look like. Um, they, these also work in tea light candles if you want to pop the little tea light out of the metal piece and then write a smaller message down in there. These larger ones also work as well, but uh, some of the edges did struggle to burn down so they took a long time, but this is what they turn out to be. I think they were adorable and a perfect surprise gift. For the next project, I needed a vase because I am going to make a beautiful little bouquet. This is such a cool way to deliver the flowers and the chocolates at the same time. And I know if I received one of these, I would enjoy it and love it so much. So I was excited to share with you how to make this. But like I say, I needed a vase. So I'm taking a little glass square candle holder from Dollar Tree that I've had forever. And I go ahead and give that a couple coats of the white paint, painting down on the inside to make sure that you are going to have pretty sides on the inside if anything shows through. And then I wanted a little girl pop of color and because the flowers I'm going to be using are pink I wanted to go with a different color so I'm using this lavender and it has like a gray undertone so I think it is a beautiful neutral color and just going to kind of paint that around the top. After my lavender color had really set and dried for a couple hours um, because you want it to really adhere to the glass so you don't mess it up, I'm just winging it and I went back in and it kind of drew a neat little design. I wanted it to look like uh, cute little vines going around this face with some little black hearts all around it, uh, but you definitely could go with a vine or um, some little floral pattern or just leave it as is if you're scared to kind of tackle this. I just always love going in and adding little details so that's kind of what I'm doing here. But like I say, I added the cute little hearts all the way around the edges and then added a piece of styrofoam down in the bottom. I made sure that I glued this down so it'll kind of stay nice in place um, because I don't want this to fall over or anything. And then I have this beautiful floral bouquet from Walmart but you definitely could just mix and match some Dollar Tree flowers. They have um, these large um, florals for three dollars and five dollars so I think that's a really good deal though so I stuck these all around there I actually took my wire cutters and uh, cut them off of the larger stem so that I had more control of how they were gonna fit down inside this and then using some Dollar Tree flowers um, I'm going to cut them off because I wanted to glue the chocolates down inside the flowers. I thought that was a cute little idea, especially adding the little pop of blue dove chocolates. Um, they would kind of pop off of the white flower more. So like I say, I cut the white flowers down and then I hot glued. I was not thinking and I hot glued these chocolates down in there. They are fine. I tried pulling one off. It does rip the paper or the wrapping off a little bit, but it, it is still worked out fine. But I would recommend if I made this again using a double sided tape or maybe um, something not so hot adhesive that was food safe um, so maybe like a touch of Elmer's glue something non-toxic or um, like I say I think I think tape would be the best option here but I glued them down inside of the white flowers and then kind of spread them out evenly and placed them down into the, to the bouquet and I just thought this was really cute and made it pop off of each of these flowers. And this is how it came together. I think it is just a sweet little touch of giving your mom a bouquet of flowers but have the cute little chocolates on there and paired with a fun little gift or card. I think that is a perfect way to celebrate Mother's Day. And then for the last project, I wanted to make a cute little personalized shadow box that she could put at her desk or somewhere in the kitchen or decorate an office or anywhere kind of like that. But um, I'm using a Dollar Tree shadow box. I think this was kind of for graduation and it had golden stars in there. So I just started by removing everything. And then uh, this particular shadow box, you have to unscrew the screws in the back to be able to paint it. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that white. And then uh, I wanted to take some little puzzle pieces. I had made a puzzle piece heart in the past and uh, you guys loved it. So I thought it would be fun to kind of make a miniature version of this. Um, but for Mother's Day, so I go ahead and take just a random puzzle that I had in the smaller pieces and paint them pink. 
and um, I recommend not painting them perfect and leaving them a little bit distressed looking because I love when the color of the puzzle actually comes out on the edges and it kind of looks a little bit weathered or rustic. So like I say, I'm going to go ahead and remove the screws in this picture frame, pull that apart, and that lets the glass come out so I don't get paint on that and then paint both pieces of this white. And once again, I would have used spray paint if I had that on hand, but right now all I have is chalk paint, so I'm going to go ahead and paint a few layers of that. For the background, I wanted something neutral, but I also wanted it to look really pretty and textured because that'll make it look uh, really like high quality. So I'm using another piece of scrapbooking paper that's in a neutral color. It's got like white and a little bit of beige in it. I traced the backing so I could get the perfect size. I cut that out and then just added a layer of Mod Podge to get this completely to uh, adhere to the back of this shadow box. For the little heart made it out of a puzzle at the top, um, I'm just laying my puzzle pieces in a row. I tried to use the longer uh, skinny ones instead of the ones that had a flat side or that were um, larger on one side than the other so that they, they were kind of all symmetrical and kind of going even together. Um, and I just freehanded this going in a circle or a heart shape. But if you wasn't comfortable with that, you definitely could take like a pencil and kind of sketch out your heart shape so you could kind of have a guide to follow along. I touched the puzzle pieces with a lighter color of pink just to make it pop a little bit more and then I printed this off just using Word and it says love you to pieces and I just felt like the white didn't pop off of that background so I glued it down on another piece of scrapbooking paper. I love that little polka dotted background. Um, I thought that I would leave it large at first but I didn't like it so I um, cut it down smaller so that it would barely have a little edging and make this look a little bit more 3D. I wanted to add a little bow to the top so I'm using some of my jute twine. This is from Dollar Tree. It's really thin and I really like this kind and all I did was take two fingers and I wrapped quite a few strands around those and then pull it off and I'm able to tie a double knot in the center and it kind of gathers the center to make it look like a cute little bow. I trimmed down the little tails of that and glued it right in the center. And then I was able to piece it all back together and this is what I'm left with. I think it is an adorable little piece. It's got that pop of pink from Mother's Day. It's also a really cute piece that you could customize a million different ways. enjoyed these and I hope you got some inspiration and uh, if you're gonna make your mom any of these or any of the special ladies in your life any of these projects leave it down in the comments I would love to know also share your photos on Instagram I'd love it if you tag me crafts by Caitlin and then it'll pop up and I'll be able to see that and share that with my followers and happy early Mother's Day to all of the wonderful ladies out there I know we work really hard and we deserve a DIY gift so make these for all of those special friends or mamas or whoever you want to in your life but but um, I hope you find some inspiration. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.